Hey friends, welcome back to Homestead on a Prayer. In case you're new here, my name is Jennifer. Today we're going to be in the kitchen and we are going to be making my favorite really easy no-fail cheesecake recipe. Then we're also going to be making some strawberry sauce to top it with. Tomorrow is Dan's birthday. Cheesecake is his favorite dessert, so I always make this at least once a year for his birthday. So today I figured I would share my recipe with you guys. So we're going to start by making a graham cracker crust. So I have here some graham crackers. I'm just going to chop these up or grind them up into crumbs in my food processor. Now we need about a cup and a half of graham cracker crumbs. And that's about 11 or 12 of these whole graham crackers here. So I'm going to add 12 of these into the food processor and just get them ground up into crumbs. Nine. You know, usually I break them just a little bit. Just give my food processor a little bit of a head start. processor finishes grinding up our graham crackers, I'm also going to melt one stick of butter to add right into the graham crackers. So this cheesecake recipe comes from my Better Homes and Gardens cookbook. This is probably the very first cookbook that I bought when I was, I don't even remember how old I was, but when I was very first learning to cook, as you can see, I use this many times and half the pages are falling out. And there are a few recipes in this book that I still use. This cheesecake is one of them. I will link this book in the video description in case you're interested. Um, this is probably an old edition. I don't know if they have a newer edition or not. But I'll see if I can find this, and if I can, I'll link it for you in the video description. While our butter finishes melting, I am going to add in a tablespoon of granulated sugar right into our graham cracker crumbs. and also half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Now that our butter is all melted, I'm going to slowly drizzle the butter through this opening in the top while our food processor runs. I usually have to scrape this down a time or two, just scrape the extra off the sides, just to make sure the butter gets evenly incorporated into all the graham crackers. Then we'll run it again, just for a few seconds. All right, so now that our crust ingredients are all combined, we are going to press them in the bottom and a little bit up the sides, about an inch or two up the sides of this nine inch springform pan. A springform pan is pretty essential when you're making cheesecake because you need to be able to remove the sides of the pan. Now I'm just going to spread this out with my fingers. I want to make it pretty even along the bottom of the pan and sometimes I find it easier to actually start going up the sides of the pan first before perfectly evening out the bottom. Now, as with most things I do, I don't worry about being too precise with this because most things that I make, I just call them rustic, and calling something rustic can hide a multitude of messiness. As I said, I'm not worried about making this perfectly even, but I do just want to make sure that I don't have any really thin spots or any any holes or cracks in the crust. Once I've got it, once I've got it pretty even, I'm going to set it to the side and we're going to make our filling. I do have my oven preheating to 375 degrees while we make our filling. For the filling, I'm going to bring over my stand mixer, although you could certainly use an electric hand mixer if that's what you have on hand. I just find the stand mixer a little bit easier. So I'm first going to put into the bowl of my stand mixer three packages of softened cream cheese. I got these out in my kitchen first thing this morning, and they've been sitting out all day. So they're nice and soft and easy to work with. So I'm going to fit our mixer with a paddle attachment. And then to our cream cheese, we are going to add one cup of sugar. I have 
have here an organic cane sugar, slightly less processed, so that you can see that it has a little bit of a golden color that gives it a little bit of a richer flavor that I really enjoy. We're also going to add, well, the recipe says a teaspoon of vanilla. You know, I didn't have any clean teaspoons, so I grabbed a half tablespoon, one and a half teaspoons, and then I realized, you know what, I think it's meant to be because a little extra vanilla I think is going to make this extra special. So about a teaspoon and a half of vanilla we're adding right into our mixer. Next we're going to add in two tablespoons of flour. Then we're just going to get this mixing on a low speed to get everything incorporated and creamed up. I'm also going to fill up my tea kettle with water and we're going to heat it up to a boil because when our cheesecake goes in the oven, we want to create a steam bath in the oven that helps it cook evenly and stay nice and moist. Now that all the ingredients in our mixer are mixed up and smooth, I'm going to add a quarter cup of milk and we're going to beat that in. Now that our milk's all incorporated, we just need to add three eggs into this mixture here. I'm going to crack three eggs into this mug here. I you know, I always like to add my eggs separately, just in case you get a bad one. So I'm going to add our three eggs into our cheesecake. Now, you don't want to mix this up very much once you add the eggs. You could even just mix in the eggs by hand once everything else is incorporated. I'm just going to run the sand mixer really quickly, as brief a time as possible, until the eggs are incorporated. So I actually got the eggs beaten up and mostly incorporated. I'm just going to scrape off the paddle attachment and do the last little bit of mixing by hand. That way I can make sure that I don't overmix these eggs. Our cheesecake filling is all mixed up and our oven is preheated to 375, so it's time to pour our filling into our graham cracker crust. Before putting our cheesecake in the oven, I am first going to take this kettle of boiling water and you can see I have this pan here on the lower rack of my oven. We're going to fill this pan with all this water from our kettle. Then I'm going to pop the cheesecake on the middle rack and it's going to cook in this oven for about 35 minutes, but I'm going to check on it after a half hour just to make sure that it doesn't overcook. While the cheesecake cooks in the oven, I'm going to make the strawberry sauce. So I have here a 16 ounce package of frozen strawberries. I've defrosted this by letting it sit out on my counter. It's still cold, but they are definitely soft. I'm going to add this entire package of strawberries into my blender here, and we're just going to puree these until they're completely pureed and smooth. I have a small saucepan here on my stove. To that pan, I'm going to add a quarter cup of granulated sugar. And a teaspoon of cornstarch. Just going to whisk the sugar and cornstarch together to make sure they're fully incorporated. Then we're going to add in our pureed strawberries. Now I'm going to whisk in the pureed berries along with the sugar and cornstarch. Now, I wait to turn the heat on this until the cornstarch is fully incorporated in with the berries and the sugar. That's because unlike most substances, cornstarch doesn't dissolve in hot liquids, it dissolves in cold liquids. So we want to make sure to get this incorporated and dissolved before adding heat to it. Now that everything is incorporated and dissolved, we're going to turn the heat on medium. I'm going to let this cook until it starts to thicken and starts to get bubbly. 
So here you can see how our sauce is bubbling and starting to thicken up nicely. I'm going to cook it while whisking it for about two more minutes, then we're gonna take it off the heat. I'm going to let this sauce cool on the counter just until it's cool enough to put in the fridge. Then it's gonna go in the fridge. I mean, it needs to chill for at least an hour, but we aren't going to be eating the cheesecake until tomorrow. So in our case, it's going to chill overnight and make a delicious topping for our cheesecake. Mm, tastes so fresh. I love the strawberry sauce because you really just taste, because you really just taste strawberries, it tastes like summer. The timer just went off for our cheesecake, so it's time to check for doneness. I'm going to show you what I'm looking for. Now what we're hoping for is for the outside edges to be set. It will still be wobbly in the middle. This doesn't look quite set to me, so I'm going to let it go. So I'm going to let it go another two minutes and check on it again. When the cheesecake is done, we want the outer two to three inches or so to be set to not, not wobble when I shake it like that. The, the center still will wobble and that's good. That's what we want. But at this point, most of the whole cheesecake was wobbling, so I think it needs a couple more minutes. It's pretty close though. This looks more set to me. So our cheesecake looks done to me, but instead of pulling out of the oven, I just turned off the oven, and now I'm just going to crack open the oven door and let the cheesecake cool for about an hour in the oven. Probably the most challenging thing about making cheesecake is preventing the top from cracking. Now I am not perfect at it, I have had many cheesecakes crack on me. Of course, since I'm recording this one for you guys, this one will probably crack on me too. We'll find out in a little bit. But the key is to really cool your cheesecake down really slowly. Sudden changes in temperature are one of the things that can cause your cheesecake to crack because you know as things cool, they shrink. And if the cheesecake shrinks and pulls away from itself in the center, that's what can cause cracking. So it's going to stay in the oven with the door open for about an hour, slowly cooling down. Once that hour's up, I'm going to pull the cheesecake out of the oven. I'm just going to run a sharp knife around the edge to separate the cheesecake from the, the edge of the pan. And I'm going to let it cool for another 15 minutes or so that way. At that point, I'm going to remove the edges of the springform pan and I'm going to let it cool on a cooling rack just on the countertop until it comes down to room temperature. And then finally, when it comes down to room temperature, we're going to stick it in the fridge and let it chill overnight. So actually the most complicated and time consuming part of cooking a cheesecake is actually the whole cool down process. But this will definitely be ready and delicious for tomorrow. Hope it, I'm hoping that it doesn't crack, but even if it does crack, you know, it's still gonna taste completely delicious. And you know what, that's what the strawberry sauce is for. We can hide all kinds of imperfections with that. I will be sure to show you a clip of this cheesecake when it's done, when we cut into it tomorrow, and you can see how luscious and beautiful it is. I've made this recipe many times. I know that it's delicious, so I definitely recommend this recipe. So thank you so much for hanging out with me in my kitchen today. I hope that you are inspired to try making cheesecake too. It's honestly not as challenging as, cheesecake kind of has a reputation for being challenging, but it's honestly not that bad. So I hope that you're encouraged to give it a try. I hope you're having a great day, and I can't wait to see you soon. I'll see you next time.